Yo, what's going on? It's Chuck your line and welcome to Averex On Air. This is a new series where I speak to artists and creatives about their field and their relationship with the brand. Today's guest, I've got one of the best stylists in the game. She goes by the name of Carlotta. Also, Morgan from Basement Approved and content creator slash podcaster, Poet. For more Averex On Air, make sure you subscribe right now, like literally right this second, via Spotify, YouTube, or Apple Podcasts. Like, literally, do this now. Please. Chucky Online, I'm back here. Look at this. Check the jacket, though. Mean. See me, when I put on an Averex jacket, I just feel like a different type of Don. I'm still that one, but I have a different type of Don. Do you understand what I'm saying? i got some guests with me, yeah? And we're going to be talking. We're going to be doing some chattings. Firstly, Carlotta. Am I saying that right? Yeah, perfect. Stylist? Yeah. yeah. Right. Got Morgan, basement approved. Come on now. My guy. And then. <laughs> and then. You already, if you see oh, me, Daddy. if you see me, you see him and you see him, he's just all over the place, just doing all kinds of stuff. He goes by the name of Poet. How are you doing, my I'm brother? I'm good, man. I'm good. How is everyone? How's everyone feeling? Everyone's got their jackets on and that? Mm-hmm. Yes. Power Rangers. Power Rangers. Did you ever, so did you ever have one when, like, as a young buck, did you have a, a No, lady? I didn't sell drugs. I actually went to education and just done it the legal way. So unless I was saving up all that money you got on a Wednesday, which is like a hundred pound, <laughs> there's no way I'm getting that 500 pound Averix jacket. On top of that, I was saying to everyone outside um, in central London, literally from Tottenham Court Road up until maybe even Bond Street Station, all them shops that are now sweet shops, even though they don't sell legitimate sweets, um, there used to be shops that sold clothes and leather jackets right. and they used to have Averixes in all of them. Yeah. So if you was a guy that made, you know, a, th a fair amount of money, you can go and get your 600 pound Averix or your 250 half leather Averix where it just had like leather sleeves and then like cotton here. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then you still kind of felt like the man. Back in the day, people used to actually rob people for the jackets. It was literally like having a Rolex. Literally like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. If you went to certain places wearing an Averix jacket, like, and you weren't thorough, someone was gonna. No, I've heard stories about it before my time. So. Oh yeah, South London right. McDonald's, and Brixton McDonald's. I see my bridging get robbed, and I say seen because I wanted to do something, but you know my wrists are really small. Uh, and Central London was the same. I see people get robbed all the time, man. It what was... did what did like Averix mean to you, Carlotta? Like, did you see that? Phase, growing up a little bit. Yeah, hundred percent. And yeah, what it became big when Fat Joe probably wore it for one of the first music videos in like nineteen ninety three, I think it was, and that's when Biggie, Nas, like, well, recently wore it. Method Man, like, mm. all the coolest guys. And for them, for me, I love that era so much. And like, just that kind of represents like what it should be now. And like, you know, the twenty year cycle, all coming back with the Tims, with like the white t shirts, just the oversized fits. Yeah. Mm. It's my favorite. You can, wait, even when you say that, you can kind of feel the vibe, can't you? You, like, you feel cool. Like when you said, when you put on a jacket, it just feels good. You, like, you step a bit different. Mm -hmm. It's true, like there was that element of where you saw, depending on obviously the, the era that you grew up in. But for me, like Nas was the coolest on for me. And it's weird actually, like, I mean, maybe this is a whole other conversation, but it's like, I always listen to, I always listen to Jay-Z more than I did Nas, but I always really, connected with Nas more. Yeah. Though, in aesthetically the way that he looked, Nas even what cooler, he represented. Right? Not yeah, cool, always but cooler. Like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Always cooler like, still. I was a Nas stan. I was a Nas stan still. So seeing him, even that, like rah, like he just was cold in the in the in the icon jacket. But then you'd see like some of the men them that I grew up with anyway, and certain artists and that wearing it too. And it was like I preferred the UK though man when they did it. Like I know I loved Averex because of More Fire Crew. When Ozzy B was walking in that scene, I said, Bob Street True with my Averex. I said, yeah. <laughs> it's just the fact that he had so much girls around him. He looked so rude, boy. He had the Averex. He's Jamaican. I said, that's relatable yeah. as well. Yeah, it's much more relatable. But yeah, isn't it yeah, crazy yeah. also how, like, how much it's done? Like, for example, you know, they did the jackets in Top Gun. And now they're like, you've got like, what, Skepta and Kano rapping about it in the UK. Like the fact that they've been able to have that kind of pull on like different cultures. And like you, you, I guess, like connecting to the different cultures, wearing it and stuff like that. It just brings it all together. It's like a nice little happy point for everyone. I like the fact that um, the UK definitely found their entry point for Averix because the only thing that was off-putting it 
for me at the start was the American flag because I'm like, I'm not American, yeah. I'm Jamaican and I'm brought here. Then when you saw all the different interpretations of Averick's jackets where they were a bit more, say, black and then so on and so forth, mm -hmm. and then I saw all the guys in grime wearing it. But the good thing about Averick's is it kind of let you know where somebody was in that type of world that we were in. Yeah. So where they were in the food chain. 100%. So when I saw certain rappers in Averick's, I know those are the dons. Yeah, they're saw, getting it. They're getting it. When I see yeah. D-Double in Averick's, I said, that's what I want to aspire to be like. Yeah. An Averix jacket and dope on the mic. I want to be the sickest MC, so that's the and that's what I liked about Averix. Even people like go to so solid, like mega. It's the crown though. Like an Averix jacket was a crown. So because yeah. the dopest rappers wore it in the early nineties and like you you know referenced, they, it was like your crown. Like maybe today it's something else, but then it was your crown. So then people just wanted to go, okay, how do I look significant? Maybe two thousand and three up to two thousand and seven. That time there, the Averix jacket was yo. That was I think it goes back to what Carlo was saying because, like, if Nas, your biggies, like, that was the most iconic era of hip hop. Mm. So, like, if all of those artists are wearing it, people look back at reference points in time. That's mm. a big those reference point. Those are the point. pictures, right? They're literally on all my mood boards whenever I'm doing anything. It's just Biggie in that like red Averick jacket. Even a lot of like nineties references. So it honestly Averick makes Tim's, me so happy. Big yeah. G like jean outfits. With the Versace glasses and like just. I only wear Versace because of the big It actually makes lie. me happy inside. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. But yeah, you know what? Like, as you were saying as well, the cycle, it's, it's interesting how the cycle always goes around. It's like, yeah. it doesn't always feel like there's much new. It's new, but it's different. Do yeah. you get what I'm saying? This is like when I work with my interns, okay? So, for example, like I was listening to some music or something, and then she was like, oh, like, have these people ever had number one? And I was like, what? And um, she was like, oh, I've never seen this. Have you seen this new style? And I was like, mate, like, honestly, it's a cycle. Like, it's so cute, isn't it? Like, yeah, the yeah, Y2K yeah. is coming up, but, yeah. That's when you know sometimes you're becoming a, the older head as well. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, yo, let me, oh, like, I'm showing you something new. Big man, like, man used to, like, my OGs used to wear that, like, a long time no, ago. No, 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 like, make another excuse. We're not getting old. <laughs> like, people are just not appreciating things for long. Because I think even there was longevity, in, I agree with your comfort, there was, there was longevity with certain things back in the day. Like, it would stand the test of time. But now people's attention span is the length of a TikTok video. So I expect certain things to come back around quicker. And I kind of feel like Avery's is going to end up staying here now because even when it did come out, the scene and the pool of people wearing it is so small, but the influence is big. Mm. Now the influence and the scene is relatively a kind of similar size in terms of like uh, the attention that you can get, you can put on the Averick's jacket and now everyone's going to know about it. Whereas back in the day, it just be a small pool of, pe pool of, pool of people. Yeah. I think that means that it just stays in the scene longer. So true, especially with the new styles they've got coming out with all the different colours and stuff like yeah. that. Like it hits different, you can do it in different scenes. Like I know we're all wearing black now. Yeah. But like different summer, different seasons. I nearly went for the orange, I'm not gonna lie, but I was wearing the orange thing I thought, you know what? I can't even orange, know. orange. I went for the brown. Much, right? I'm trying to be like autumn. Yeah. Went, went for the faded one to match the fade. Come on, my yeah. guy, man. Quickly, you get me? Sometimes I feel like the casual vibe for me is what, you know what I mean? But also I like that. I like all of the badges. Yeah, and man. Like, I'm a fly guy, man. Great Pilot cool. vibes. So you said that to me before. He's like, right, I look like I'm about to go and fly a plane. I said, yeah. <laughs> Come on, yeah. my G, man. And I'm light skin. You wear brown and light skin. You look like autumn. That's our thing, man. Come on, man. That's my vibe. Let's divert a little bit. Let's have a little conversation about like the content space and stuff right now. I feel like there's been, there's been an interesting um, change. And there's like certain little things that I have noticed that at first I didn't even see was so much of a, a thing. But one being the fact that like, it's always been easy to just make content and do stuff. That's mm -hmm. how people have seen it, yeah. But more so now, like now everyone's just trying to film something. Everyone's just trying to be in front of a the camera. They're trying to be in, in the realms of it, yeah. Anyone can do it, right? Anyone can do it, yeah. But also another thing that I'm seeing like soup, which is quite interesting is I'm getting a crazy amount of people every day emailing me saying to me yo do you need me to do reels and shorts and whatever For else TikTok, yeah it's so TikTok centric at the moment does that mean that like does that mean there's like an oversaturation in something yeah of course it's, it's been oversaturation for a while i think a, ma a major contributing factor to that is in 2020 when everyone realized they can work from home when you realise you don't actually have to go to work in another working field and you have more time in your house, I don't imagine people at work don't go on Facebook or something like that whilst yeah, they're at work. Yeah, yeah. But now you have the luxury of doing it without having to look over your shoulder. Then you go, what else can we do? And then you take a look at what people are doing at home, such as making content, and then all of a sudden, 
Within a year, you convince yourself that you're a content specialist. You might be, but I just don't believe that's the case. And then you, that's how you get oversaturation because it is a market where you can actually make a lot of money without having guys, to spend a lot. I call these guys the slashes, where it's like they do something, but then they've seen that they can do something else, so they just slash. There's like, oh, we can do reels, we can do TikToks, we can do all this, and it's just like. I rate you though. Yeah, exactly. Fair Come play. On. But it's like also everyone's like it's just an endorphin here, isn't it? Like you get sucked in sometimes when you're just looking at those reels. Hundred percent, hundred percent. I think yeah, it's just interesting because like I think I read something like majority of young people use TikTok as their search engine as opposed no. to Google. Yeah, 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 yeah because yeah, yeah. What? because because they'd rather see what another young person is saying about like a news matter for example than sky news or bbc because they know it's probably going to be some biased opinion but if it's from someone their age their dem demographic for example where they're from then it's probably going to be you know more relevant information to them or well, what if it's it might not even be the age thing what if it's just quick i think what? it's as quick as google searching but it's just like yeah but you got someone explaining it quickly yeah. do you reckon it might be an element of that it's like okay i could go on and i can read it but if I've got somebody who's going to explain it to me in 30 seconds... Yeah, literally so quick. It might be both though, man. It might be both. I think it is a little bit of me... I can speak from experience and say, if I go on TikTok and I see someone similar to me explaining something, that's going to keep me, yeah. you know, there engaged. Mm -hmm. If it was someone that I don't recognise or recognise from my type of world, I'm probably just going to go back to Google. So, see, OK, being a stylist then, for example, yeah, do yeah. you feel like now, because of where we're at, or where we have been in the last 24 months, mm -hmm. that this is something that you actually need to be fully immersed in in order to lift your clientele and like, and, and like be solidified in where you're at. Yeah, I guess so, but I also think, well, like you were saying, a lot of people that have come up that now do these videos and stuff like that, and everyone's calling themselves a stylist and stuff like that, which is fine, like I get it. But it's, it's my fit for today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Oh, right. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you, hold your thought. It's like those videos that I see where like, people come out and they say, okay, outfit check, the yeah. shoes are, the jeans are, it's a little the flick. jacket is. <laughs> No, but I get it and like I'm here for it and I appreciate it and like sometimes, yeah, I'll use them as references and stuff like that. But I think it's also um, probably just the I don't know, experience, I guess, and like it's just actually doing the work and like, yeah, mm. experience comes down yeah, to Yeah, if you haven't lot. got anything to make content about that is worth making content about, at the end of the day, it's not going to be exactly. good content, is it? Do you know what I mean? Like, so. If you're going to be doing styling videos and you're not putting a lot of effort into the outfits, then they're not going to be engaging. So it's the same as anything, really. I think with the oversaturation, it's getting the same with like, even if you look at live shows and you go to a show now, everyone's filming the yeah. same thing. Like Ooh. every single person in the crowd's filming the same thing. So I've seen Chris like, Brown show already. I mean, do you know what I'm saying? Like, so, save yourself some bone. So you <laughs> save some bread, boy. Save yourself some bread, boy. Like, yeah, like, like, Come like, on. like that girl, that girl getting her phone dashed into the crowd. I've seen that literally a hundred times since it happened. How many angles? So, yeah. So, just what I'm saying, <laughs> how like even as a media platform, like how can we create content that's different to what anyone else can see? Do you get what I'm saying? How? So, how do you? Like, well, my opinion is just showing what people can't see anywhere else. So like we've got access to like behind the scenes. So I would prefer to just use that more because the 20,000, 10,000, 5,000 people in the crowd can't see that, can't see what's going on behind the scenes. We just done something with Meeks where it was like, we just followed him on tour, like before he went on stage, when he changed his outfits. And that performed better than like some TikTok content I've seen from the show because it's just the same thing that you've seen on, on, his, on his page. That's yeah. what people want to see and that's why I always think with my work that that's probably the content I put out is like what is what people don't necessarily get to do, I guess. And we're so fortunate to be in that position to be able to do that and to be able to put that content out there and kind of share it. I do like the content space though. I'm being harsh, man. One thing I will say is this, why I love Channel U? First of all, they definitely were plugging Averex, Jesus Christ. Mm. They're every Channel U had at Averex. But beyond that is, you take a look at N-Dubs, they're a prime example. We're just seeing, it's oversaturated, so you've probably got like 900,000 inversions of N-Dubs where you get to see someone's journey from when they're really not good at it to three years later, where, oh my God, they're so, so good. So some people's entry point are going to be a little bit later on, but I do like seeing journeys. So I just think the reasons yeah. why maybe I believe this place is really oversaturated and I'm like, oh God, the quality threshold needs to improve is because I'm seeing so much people at the start of their journey. Mm. So mm, I, if, even myself, I need to just calm down and allow people's space to grow. And because you take a look at some people's journey, but I like, got a picture of me in H, 2018, him trying to break in bloody wireless and look at him now. So like, and you could have looked at those situations and I don't know, had a, a perspective on it. But when you give, 
a lot of people time to grow in this space now. They do find themselves at the start is copying this and copying that, but then they find themselves and right. then you see some really, really good interpretations of content out there. There's some, there's much more today than there was back in the day. So Morgan, do you know what? I don't want anyone to be ignorant to like what it is that black people do here. Yeah, uh -huh. for anyone who doesn't know. Because you was talking about like following Meeks around and stuff like that. Could you give me like a little light breakdown of what it is that you, what you do and yeah, essentially what the plan is. What are you attacking every day? I guess the basement what it is, is like a community platform. Got loads of different members from walks of life that have different interests. It started in fashion. And then like just being a part of the community naturally, I was like, rah, like all of us care about music as well. Some people care about, they'll talk about traveling or whatever, whatnot. So, I ended up just focusing more on putting music content out, etc, etc. So we're now in a place where, where? we've got... Music uh, content, like where? Like oh, just like on Instagram, on our website. Right. Obviously now we're on TikTok. But we're just kind of at a place where we make content that people want to see because like, I feel like I'm going to name drop, but a lot of the media platforms, they just do what you know they think young people want to see, but they're not young people creating content so we just work with like all the creators we work with are young people like they're all you know people that enjoy the stuff that we're doing the stuff that we're creating as opposed to just like being from the outside of the culture trying to you know capitalize off of stuff that's going on so yeah really we're just like a creative hub media platform um agency all rolled into one thing the type of content that you do create with with young people, yeah? Do you find that a lot of the time they are trying to usually create one certain type of content? From from my experience, Gen Z don't like doing stuff the same way. Like, so why would we go and do something that's already been done? It's all about finding creative solutions to things. So for example, like the Meeks thing, everyone wants to do a documentary, everyone wants to do this, everyone wants to do that. So how can we create something that's just more intimate like for the for the consumer so we just picked like three different photographers that are from all over the country but they're a part of the basement got them a pass they went and shot the show and the story was more interesting because you know oh, these are just three up-and-coming photographers using the um, community to create stories like we could work with we've worked with big artists like juice world like um, some huge artists slow tie before he, he blew, we've worked with so you know, we've just see that these artists come and go. They work with you, they go. So let's use them to, you know, build value into the creatives that, like you were saying, are at the beginning of their journey. So if we can help as, you know, we've got 300,000 followers, if we can use our platform to help other people, whether it's brands, you know, consumers find new creatives, then there's job, job done, isn't it? Yeah. Po, like, how do you, like, I know you were saying before that you felt you was being a little bit harsh. Yeah. On the, on the creative scene and stuff like that. How do you feel like you find creative solutions? Because you're actually a very creative person. You're always just trying to figure out like the next, the next step yeah. of maybe your career or not even just the career, but just in like the direction in which you could move in, in with a team of people and stuff like that. How do you kind of go about looking for creative solutions? You do it every single day, bro. Um, and the reasons why you do it every single day is because the moment you start working with a team of people, you have to appreciate that some of the things you heard at the start might not be the case two, three years later. So I'm always talking to people just so I can figure out where their minds are at because the moment I feel like we're not on the same page, I've got a decision to make. Either I step back and allow everyone to just do what they're doing. Do I get heavily more involved because we don't know where we're going? Because I prefer, I prefer to, to try and solve problems before they come. I don't like getting to a problem then going, how do we resolve it? I always wanna know what people are thinking and know what's going on just so I'm aware of what might potentially happen in the future so I can put things in place to not allow it to happen. So um, yeah, it's always making sure you're talking to your team, always making sure that you know what they wanna do and always making sure that you ain't holding no one back because you have to allow people to progress and grow because even their growth inspires you to think of something different and more creative or work intensely. Is a part of that looking into nostalgia a bit? So you know like we were saying before, right like, like Jordi for example might do something, you think right like people don't even really do that so much anymore. That was something that we did 
before you start looking at certain things that happened from before and incorporating it back yeah. to like what we're doing yeah, yeah, now yeah, yeah. Do, you, do you understand what i'm saying it's that fine balance in it i think with it's difficult so i always say when you're here at the adolescence where there's no industry your knowledge and your whole way of approaching the situation is based upon what is happening in life more time when it becomes an industry and it's an office if you're spending more of your time in the office, then what's going to happen is just bag of recycled ideas mm -hmm. every month just being shipped around this office and you're just trying to figure out the new way of doing that. And you know, it's just a bit boring, bruv, I think after a while when I take a look at that perspective. I think you need to have a bit of that because that's got a lot of organisational skills. But then you need to be involved in life because life presents what the industry wants. Mm. It doesn't work the other way around. So in life, you see someone like Meeks Manny from Manchester coming up and all of a sudden the industry goes, we need to invest in like that. It doesn't really happen the other way around unless you're Lady always, Sovereign. It's always been like that. Like yeah. The industry has always followed the streets because the streets is where the culture is and it's created. Like. So, same, yeah. the same as music as well. 100%. I was about to say, it sounds fashion. like all the, um, like the music people that I work with and all the companies, like it's literally these like, ideas just going round and round in an office and all they need is that fresh take of someone that's outside of that to be yeah. able to let things really grow. Or they should just go outside for longer than an hour during their lunch break and just yeah. not go for food. <laughs> Honestly, just walk down yeah. the street, go take a look, talk to some people, who knows what might happen. You obviously work with all different types of people, right? So you, you work yeah. with artists, you work, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm assuming that you also work with a lot with like influencers, content, content creators and stuff like that as well, right? Yeah, maybe not so much with like content creators and influencers. It's more like um, athletes, musicians, actors, right. that kind of thing. So don't they don't play my team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> but okay, even see like when you're working with like athletes and stuff like that, yeah. you um. Can I take an educated guess that like the type of shoots that you're on with them mm -hmm. would have changed from when you first started to how oh it is God, now? Oh my God, absolutely. And the fact that now, you know, everyone's focusing so much more on video content and stuff like that. And like people want to, like, you know, the podcast, the fact that we're filming this, like to go out there, like people want to see what's happening and what's going on, I guess. So it used to be, it used, when I first started out, literally like 10 years ago, it was just pictures. Like you'd, when I was at um, a magazine called GQ, um, Jeez! <laughs> hey. Come on, man! You're not playing your thing. It's your oh, no, thing. Do that. Do you know what? I need that. No, I'm gonna do that. Today. I need that today. Yeah, I need that. Name drop to bits. Yeah, bro. Yeah. You're walking right. CV. This is your <laughs> thing, guys. Exactly. You're okay. here for a reason. Anyway, so when I was on, when I used to work at GQ, it literally we focused on print magazine, and that was it at the beginning. And then it took us so long to try and, you know, step out into that creative world and like, oh my gosh, we've got to start now working on online, and like that's going to be the main thing. We were like, no way. Like print's going to be like there forever, mm -hmm. and it's just funny, like. Also, Basement, like, I've been following it since we were back in the day, like, on Facebook. Like, it's so good how, like, the community is just, like, beginning. building See, with I'm it. Saying it started from a Facebook group and now, like, we have, you know, got m collabs with some of the biggest sportswear brands. Like, even, like, at the moment, like, there's a big thing about print is dead, etc., etc. We've just done our first print magazine and the first one, there wasn't a lot of focus on video content, but the second one, there's going to be a lot more focus on video content. And, like, for me, I was thinking, right, oh, it's funny for a magazine that, that's like one of the main focuses, trying to communicate print content into like yeah. onto TikTok basically. And also having to like, so like most of our shoot focus is like, we'd get the shots and then it would be like video. Whereas honestly, it never ever used to be like that. And it's nice also, cause that's what people want to watch, right? And like then if you like it, then you'll go out and buy the magazine or then you'll go out and like share the pictures because it's got a story and you're literally, you feel like you're a part of that, that mm. group or that, that, that image right. that is being told. You said something about like incorporating the print element with TikTok. I hear you right. How can you show like, cool, say this was an editorial shoot right now. Like a lot, a lot of what people are doing is just hiring someone with an iPhone to walk around and film what's going on. Just so it feels like the person watching is literally walking behind the subject, if that makes sense. So I think it's just like about realizing stuff that almost feels unattainable for the consumer when they're watching it on their phone like big productions like big shoots and that like people don't really care anymore what do you feel like we should be seeing less of i don't have a clue guys i feel like everything is the way it needs to be in order for you to figure out what you need to do um markets are getting bigger there is oversaturation and i understand that but i think that's even important as well i think there's a there are consumers that need uh to 
access information like that because they're maybe not that interested in music or that interested in any one particular art. They just like the certain, you know, just the top end of it, like the cherry. Mm -hmm. So just that's their way to access it. It's not what I love. It's not what I prefer. But I genuinely feel people like myself, you, us guys, that maybe we like specialist situations. We're few and far between. Mm -hmm. So um, it just means that today we have to treat finding content like going to uh, TK Maxx and finding a nice t-shirt. Yeah, it's yeah. going to take a little bit more time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you get that t-shirt, Giza, you will tell everyone, I got it from TK Maxx, you know, <laughs> bargain tick. So I just think, yeah, it's just up. I think it's now more than ever, it's down to us to just make a bit more of an effort and maybe change and diversify the, diversify the way we actually get the information in the first place. What would you say, Morgan, in, in, in regards to like, what maybe you might like to see more of? in regards to the content space? More more like collectives and platforms as opposed to like individual content creators. So I feel like a lot of people now are just like, yeah, like it's very self-absorbed, like, oh, look at my journey. Whereas, you know, I would find it more interesting to watch a group of five, 10 friends. What, what do you lot get up to as a collective as opposed to just like watching one person go shopping or go out for food or whatever, whatnot. Oh, so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that for me is like something I've been wary of for, for a while still, just like there's too many, I think, individuals that could be working together. Like people that work in the same spaces even speak to the same kind of audiences. Like um, everyone's just more worried about one. Yeah. Mm. And it's crazy because there's so many sayings. It's like it takes a village to raise a child. Most of the things that you like in sport are, are teams, competitive teams. So there's so many aspects of team. There's a team here filming this. And even in grime, like all of these people started off in crews, fam. Like, yeah. But again, it's because it, that's more interesting to hear five man, how five man would jump on a beat as opposed to one man for three minutes. It helps individuals in life a lot more. When you figure out that these individuals have been brethren for 10 years and they've got like a multi-million pound business, all of a sudden you get to look at your brethren and go, wait, Hold on, yeah, yeah. Come on, can man do the same thing? Because all the information you're ever given, or I was given when I was younger, is I have to go outside of my friendship circle, outside of what yeah. my comfort zone, mm, yeah. in order for me to start a career. But then when you watch grime videos and watch Risky Rose and all of that, these guys are doing big sets. They're all brethren. Yeah. These guys are doing big things. They're all friends. And they seem to be growing with each other. So there should be more examples of Boy Better Know than there are of just any one artist. What would you say, like, like you would like to see more of in regards to like the content space, maybe specifically towards your field though? You know, from a personal perspective, I think it's just nice to see, like we were saying, like the BTS stuff, but more on like a real like personal level rather than a big production, like setting up like behind like the scenes and stuff like that. And like, like you were talking about people coming together. It's like you see from a creative point of view, all these collectives coming together of like cameramen, sound, and then they produce this incredible thing because they're a team and because they're doing it. Mm. Where it's like, we're actually seeing more of that, which is really nice. So I feel like it kind of comes into that, mm. that kind of thing. But what do I want to see more of? Yeah, just that thing, basically like real stuff. Like you don't want to like airy fairy stuff or like make it look so polished, just stuff that's real and like how being a stylist looks incredible and it looks amazing and I can name drops like for like the next whatever couple of hours but at the end of the day no one realises how tough it is or like how you're working till like what 3am or you're like picking up calls from Korea or like all from like <laughs> Japan and like they're asking you to fly an outfit out and it's 2am and you've got to get it on the plane at 8am mm. and like how you're turning that around. Well, what, what's, what's the plan um, going forward? I know you're working with like a lot of content creators and stuff like that like Next, what next, probably say a year or so, what do you feel that looks like for, for you and your team? Eventually branch out into other territories so we can make content across Europe, because obviously we speak to quite a big audience. So um, at the moment, I feel like they they kind of pay attention to us, see what's going on in the UK when I feel like we can show them what's going on in the rest of the world as well. So yeah, really just um, expanding on what's already been done, to be honest with you. People what about you, Poe? Yeah. Like, you've been here for a minute and you've had to literally, you've had to literally... Not too long. I'm very you've been young. For, yeah, no, but like, the fact that you've been able to be here and exist for this long, what do you feel that has been the fundamental thing that's kept you here? Um, my ability to rebrand so consistently. My ability to go, I'm bored, I'm more, usually more bored of me before the consumer is of, is of me. So I'm like, what can I do? to keep uh, the interest up. So, especially when I told you when I started Copa, 
I remember doing like Copa work for a year and a half and then walking through Tottenham and someone goes to me, Poet, you ain't done content in time. And I was like, rah, so I ain't speaking to these man no more. Right. So I was like, cool. And then that's the one I made uh, with Teagle, linked up with Teagle, made Filthy, uh, linked up with you, made HC Pod, um, linked up with my boy TJ, made Vibber, linked up with Alhan, made uh, Gasworks. I remember during COVID, I had to make one poll. So I consistently make new stuff so I can always um, not be bored. I think now the real test is um, how do I, because all of those individuals would have been watching, would have been like around, and it? it's not like a new group of people. It's just yeah. me presenting myself in different ways to the same group of people. And I think one of the first times now I have to proper reinvent myself. So I've just, I've taken months off, bro. Like as well as them doing work, just always figuring out, okay, how do I use all the things that we've got now? Because think about it, like Filthy is like 10 years next year. Uh, HC is 10 years next year. Vibart is 10 years in a year and a half's time. So it's about how do I now present these existing brands to a brand new audience uh, and keep that going for another decade, you know where I'm coming from. So those are the real tests. Certain period of times you kind of take a step back. Of you're reevaluating, come back, step back, reevaluate. You have to, it's a team, innit? And when you've got a team, like, I'm sure Thierry Henry at one point was not the man at Arsenal. I remember when he first signed, and there was other guys that were the guy. And then just in the course of time, Thierry Henry becomes the guy, and then the other players have to take a seat back or maybe get sold or so on and so forth. It's not too dissimilar, I think, in other working fields. You have to always be aware. That's such doing. a good lesson for everyone, just to realise that everyone is on their own path and that you're doing okay. And like, just to keep going and not like, you know, um, like compare yourself to anyone else around you. If you're taking a step back, it's okay. You'll get other chances, you'll do other things. Well, you've got to compare yourself to yourself. Yeah, exactly. Stay true to yourself is the main thing that I've always, always said. Yeah, if you want longevity in a situation such as this, you have to do self-evaluation because if you don't, everybody watching you is. Yourself, like what, going forward, like yeah. next year or so, like what do you, how does that, how does that look for you? I mean, so I went freelance about three or four years ago and it was one of those cycles where I was seeing everyone doing everything and it was just a new a new venture for me like coming off of like quite being with quite a big brand but um who was the brand right I like that. <laughs> come on man yeah. she just right. dropped, you're a walking yeah. scene so it was like, no it was just went left when I did a stint at Vogue so right. GQ and then went to Vogue and then went Strong. by myself Strong. Yeah, right then. <laughs> um yeah but it's just one of those things where like Every year, like you're saying, I, I don't know what's like, honestly, in two weeks time, I could be doing like something completely different. Like you just don't know with styling because it comes up so last minute too. But what I want for the next year is just, don't know, like just pushing myself, keep pushing, keep going hard, keep grinding and also just keep focusing and doing what I want to do. Not listening to anyone, not thinking I have to be at this certain event because everyone's there. It's literally like, if I feel good doing it, then it's just going to work and just... Yeah. When do we think that like the, the, the emails that I'm getting and that maybe some of you lot get in regards to like reels and shorts and all this, like, I'm, the, the constant flow of these type of, when do you feel like it's going to stop? I thought it would have stopped time ago, mate. I got 10 emails this morning of beats saying, poet, oh. listen to my beats. And that was just oh. this morning. So I don't think it ever stops, but that's the beauty about it, isn't it? Like, Something's gonna change. Like, it will change. Like, no one saw TikTok coming, right? Like, when everyone saw it, they were literally like, what's this? Like, it takes time. No, I, I think you, you would've seen TikTok, because I used to, listen, I used to be at the Rewind office, yeah? These are, no, Gregory, remember? Vines. Brother, every Friday morning, let's watch so the Vine good. compilation. Vines. So you just yeah. knew <laughs> there was gonna be an extension of that in some capacity. Wait, which, uh, which part of, where, like, what year was that? Vines, Around I would say 2015. Was, yeah, no, wow. before, before that still, yeah. Before definitely. that, yeah. Mm. 2015 was when I was definitely on it. Also, no. those memes are still going. Like, I still... Yeah, there's still yeah, certain memes still from Vines so that are still out there. Proper, that so... That is insane. There's still people that have got, like, they're still relevant now on Instagram, yeah. TikTok, whatever, from Vines. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I, to, to be honest with you, I did see TikTok coming, but I also just think sometimes, at the time, I just thought it's not for me. But then I'm always thinking, how can I do it? How can I use it for my business? It's about like using it to communicate to the people who do use it. Right. Sometimes it's just all about the medicine and the candy. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, depending on what it is that you're trying to put, for me anyway, it's like, I'm trying to give this, the sides of us that is authentic. So I already know that what, with what we do, I know, I know the clips that are going to do a madness over there. Yeah. I know them. But you know what? It's not going to stop me from doing this one, which I know ain't going to bang as much. But this clip here ends up 
doing a madness gets us some followers, yeah, gets us some more because some people are going to want to see a little bit more of that. Now, in the percentage of the followers that we gain off that one clip, for example, that's done a madness, maybe only 5% of them might go and see the, uh, the, the medicine, but that's cool though, because still 5%, do you get what I'm saying? And that 5% might pass it to a next. So I'm always still trying to give the, the medicine and the candy without just actually fo focusing on just this. But I, I feel like that's something that I found work, has worked for us. You know what I mean? So. Well, yeah, you know, Why? give thanks every day. Every you know I mean? single. Oh, my oh, gee, you know we here, man. I don't know how I'm here, but my day. Yeah, are. exactly. No, but listen, honestly, a thanks for coming by and, um, you know, exchanging the energy and whatnot and looking fly in the Averex jackets and all these type of things there. You know what I mean? So it's the perfect vibe for the time of the year. Actually, it is super cold right it's now. So cold. <laughs> it's so cold. You're going to need a hoodie cold. underneath that. You're going to need a hoodie underneath that. Appreciate Averex every time. Love. Thanks for watching, everyone, yeah?